In this lesson, we're going to go over how to create a drawing in Fusion 360. The part that we're going to be creating a drawing off of is the Titan 5M. Let's take a look at Titans of CNC's drawings to kind of give us a, an idea of what our drawing is going to look like. Sheet number one of their drawing shows our basic shape and dimensions of our basic shape. Shape number, or sheet number two shows us our star feature and then the engraving. And then sheet number three shows our bolt hole circle with our start angle and then has some call outs on here for our thread dimensions and chamfer dimensions. So let's jump into Fusion 360 and create our drawing. Very first thing that you need to start with is you need to start with your part already modeled and your part needs to be saved. We're going to change our workspace from the design workspace into the drawing workspace. And we are going to be using our template that we created in another video. Um, please check that video out and then press OK. Very first thing that Fusion 360 is going to do is it's going to bring in our front view. Well, we're going to change our front view to a two to one scale because this is kind of a small part. And then for this particular part, because we got some threads on that flange, we're going to turn on uh, hidden with our visible with hidden edges for our style. We're going to place our front view right around this area and then press OK. Very first thing that we're going to do after we land our view is we're going to get rid of this um, eagle cutter by unchecking it from our browser window here. Once we're done with that, we're going to land our other two views, our top view and our isometric view. We're going to go up to drawing views, down to projected view. We're going to choose our parent view and then drag our mouse up and then drag our mouse up and over to the right, giving us our isometric view. Afterwards, press enter to lock it into place. We're going to change our isometric view to shaded with visible edges and then close that out. Now that we have our three views on here, we're going to add our dimensions to our front view. We're going to go to dimensions down to ordinate dimension. We're going to reference off the top of the part and drag our zero location off. Then we're going to reference the top of the flange and then drag our dimension out. And then lastly, from the bottom of the part, referencing the end location of our extension line, and we have the bottom measurement. Notice our measurements here, the annotations are off a little bit. We're gonna go down to the bottom center where our annotation settings are. We're gonna turn display trailing zeros on and change our linear dimension precision to the thousands column. By doing this, notice our zero location went from zero to a decimal point with three trailing zeros. We're gonna change its primary precision by double clicking on it. And then out of this pop down window, we're gonna choose zero. Our front view is almost done. Over here, we're just going to put a text with the leader line coming off of it. And we are going to indicate that all the chamfers on this part are going to be typical. So we're going to type in TYP. We're going to insert a, a diameter or an angle symbol here. And we're going to close this window out. So what that statement means is all the chamfers on this part are going to be typical 10 thousandths at 45 degrees. 
Now we're going to take a look at our top view. Very first thing that we're going to have to do in our top view is we're going to go to geometry and go to center mark pattern. We're going to kind of reference off of our hole here by le left clicking on it and then pressing OK in our pop-up window. By doing this, this gave us two different things. It gave us the ability to reference off of these uh, construction lines um, to put in our start angle, and then we can reference off of this circle, giving us our bolt hole circle. So let's do those now, D on the keyboard. We're gonna reference off this vertical line down here, and then we're gonna reference off of this line here, and must have clicked on the wrong thing. If you click on the wrong thing, you can always hit escape on the keyboard. I click on the line and then this line. And then we're going to drag our mouse up and in between those two lines. I'm going to right click and press OK. I'm going to change this to the front here and type in start angle. just like that. Okay, now that we have our start angle in place, D on the keyboard, we're gonna reference off of the circle and then that will give us our bolt hole circle. We're gonna type that in here. Next thing that we're gonna take a look at are our holes. We're gonna use a text with a leader line. I'm gonna click on this, drag our leader line out. There are five holes total, so five X. And these are quarter 20. Unified course, class 2B. I'm going to hit shift enter. Um, excuse me, sorry. And then the depth of our threads um, are going to be 275 thousandths deep. Then shift enter. Our hole diameter is going to be 200 and 1 thousandths deep. So we're going to go to symbols, diameter. And the hole is also going to have a depth of 300 thousandths. And now we'll close that out. We're going to move this over a little bit so it's not running off the page. And we may move our entire star or the entire part over a little bit, give us a little bit more room. And for some reason, it's not liking me today. Let's try it this way. No, nope. maybe the front view is driving it. Let's try that. Yep, that's what the issue was. So the front view, because that's our base view, was driving that. All right, so that kind of freed up some room over here so it's not all scrunched together. The only other thing that we're missing out of this call out here um, 
is I'm also going to put my chamfer information on here for our holes. So I'm going to put in um, the countersink symbol, then the diameter symbol, and then call out our diameter here. and the angle. I'm sorry, this is a 90 degree included angle. That's looking better. Next dimension that we're going to be looking at are our corner radiuses. We don't have a lot of information up here in the right hand side or the bottom down here, so I'm going to use that area. I'm going to go D on the keyboard. First thing I'm going to call out is this radius here. But notice when I drag my mouse over, it's following this theoretical circle that's in place there. Um, and if I drop my measurement here, it's the arrow is pointing towards basically nothing. There's no feature there. And I don't want to cause any confusion um, with this measurement. So there's, there is a workaround with this, is we can call, we can use a text with the leader line, and we can reference off that arc, and then we can type in the values that we have um, stated up above. The only issue with doing it this way is if you ever revise the part, um, these dimensions will not update automatically for you. So with that in mind, I'm going to delete the original one, and then now we have our text with the leader. We're going to go back to dimension. We're going to reference off the tip here. We're going to land that measurement, then put our quantity in, and close that out. Almost done. We're going to make a reference here for our engraving. We're going to use a text with a leader on that. And we're going to go right off the isometric view here. And I'm just going to choose an area here and place my text. and then the depth symbol. Almost done. The only thing that we're missing on this to make it fully defined is we're missing the diameter of our outside of our part. So D on the keyboard. And I'm actually going to stick my diameter right up here and make that kind of in between these measurements here. The only other thing that we could possibly add if you wanted to um, is you could add some uh, edge extension geometry coming off of our star. Um, that will kind of help the next person figure out how you design the star. Um, the way that this works is you click on the edge extension here and you can actually click on the innermost line here or sorry, the outermost line, and then the outermost line down here, and then the outermost line down here, and that will kind of give you some geometry, and then we're just going to repeat that around. And do it on this side. And do it on this side. Make sure you're clicking on the outermost portion of the part. And then that way you can kind of see that these lines are kind of extending off of each other there.
All right. Other than that, this blueprint is pretty much done. The only other thing that we're going to update is our title block. We're going to double click on the lines of the title block so we can change our attributes. Our material, we're going to update this to 6061 T6 aluminum. And then we're going to label this as revision A. So a good opportunity. Double check your part. Make sure all the measurements are in place and the part is fully defined so somebody else can make it. And then definitely save your drawing. This concludes the tutorial on how to make a drawing for the Titan 5M.